This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. So I found this really useful blog online called Up Ubuntu, and it has a whole bunch of useful information for Ubuntu users. And here are some really handy features that you can use to speed up older versions of the OS or older computers that have older versions of Ubuntu on them. The first one is Daemon. Now this is a daemon called Preload. It stores commonly used apps in the background in a cache so that they can be called up quickly with faster load times. It monitors applications that users run, and by analyzing this data, it fetches those binaries and their dependencies in the mem into memory for faster startup times. To install this, of course, it's really easy. sudo apt-get install and Now, once you have that installed, it uh, preloads default settings are really good. But if you want to update those, we also have a link to the Up Ubuntu blog in the show notes. So you can go through those directions. It's pretty easy to do. Uh, the next one is auto clean. It, you can auto clean your app cache with this command. It's sudo apt get auto clean. Now, what this is going to do is clean up all of the old files that are in your apt cache. Now, why does it do this? Old package downloads store caches in the apt, and this cache will grow over time. This is going to take up tons of space, and it's going to slow down your computer over time as well. You can also use sudo apt get clean to clean up all of your cache entirely. Now, one of the other things you can do is disable some of the startup applications. This one's really e easy. You just go into Unity Dash, or you install the Boot Up Manager to disable all sorts of services. So if I go in here, and I look for startup applications, so I'm not running many things in here at this moment. But if I were, I could choose one, pretty much anything in here, and I could add, remove, or edit its startup uh, as a startup program. The next thing you can do is check your used swappiness space. Now this is over in, uh, for example, all you have to do is cat processes system vm and then look for swappiness. And it tells me that I'm currently at 60. Now, this parameter controls all the processes that are moving from physical memory to a swap disk. Because disks are a lot slower than RAM, this can lead to a really slow machine. The default value, of course, is 60. And to change it, all you have to do is edit this particular file. Now, in this file, you're going to look for a line that says vm.swappiness equals, and then you can change it to something like 10. So I'll look through here real quick. Now, if you notice that it's not in here, you can also add the line and then just put in vm.swappiness equals 10 as well. Um, after that, you just have to save your file and exit, and you're good to go. Now, why do we do this? Changes are going to take effect once you reboot the system. And the higher the value, the more the system is going to swap. The values are between 0 and 100. So if you choose 100, the kernel will always find inactive memory pages and swap them out. So next off, you can turn off hibernation with a really simple command. It's sudo gedit slash etc slash init resume. And once you edit this file, you can comment out the line that says resume equals UUID equals star, 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 by adding just a simple pound at the end, or at the beginning. And then you just save and you reboot. Next up, disable grub2. Now this might sound kind of weird, but follow with me. So disable the boot menu by ed editing the file called sudo gedit. grub and then you want to search for grub underscore timeout equals zero and you want to make sure that you change this to zero now you can hold down the shift key while rebooting to show the grub to menu if you need, need need be since grub loads its configurations at startup it can be a little slow when your machine is first starting up so hence why you want to maybe close it next off you can optimize a PC with 
low RAM by using ZRAM, which creates a kind of compressed block device mimicking a swap disk, but compressed and stored in memory to reduce disk thrashing. All you have to do is run these simple commands. All about the commands. So you're going to add a repository, PPASH NATSIL, ZRAM. Let's go ahead and add that. Enter to continue, of course. And this is going to take a moment to do it. And then after that, you're going to put in sudo apt-get. update to update the app get and give this a moment to run once that's done type in sudo apt get install zram enabler zram swap enabler and as you can see i already installed it on this machine and that's it It'll run in the background, and it'll make sure that all your memory is faster. Next up, remove those visual effects using compiz-config compiz settings manager. Now, you can get this by just typing in sudo app get, of course, install compiz-config settings manager. And once you have that, you can start it now and head over to the effects section and then disable all the enabled effects. To do that, just go into your dash and look for Compiz Settings Manager. And it's going to bring up a nice big list of all sorts of different things in here. So there's a lot of com customization that you can do. And I can turn off all these crazy effects that I have going on, animations and whatnot. Once you're done, just close, and you're good to go. Very easy one. Next up, use the system RAM for the temp read-write operations. To do this, put in sudo edit, gedit, etc, fs tab. At the very end of the file, you're going to add two different lines. So the first one's going to be tempfs backslash tmp tmpfs. And after that, defaults no exec, no suid, zero, zero. So what this is going to do is move all those temporary files over to RAM and hopefully make your computer much faster. And last stuff, but definitely not least, changing your desktop environment. There's tons of really fast ones out there. There's XFCE, of course. I'm sure a lot of you guys already use that one. GNOME, KDE, one of Darren's favorites. LXDE, another one. Uh, you could also use something like Pantheon. I've never personally used Pantheon, um, but you know, who knows? It might be pretty useful. And you can also use Cinnamon desktop environment, another one that I've never actually used myself. Well, if you guys have ideas on how to make my old PC a little bit faster with Ubuntu, I'm going to reinstall Ubuntu, of course. But I want to find out from you guys what you do every day to make sure that your PC is running at top notch, even if it's, you know, two, three, four years old. You can always email me, feedback at hack5.org. And I'll see you on the flip side. So imagine this. You're setting up a website. Maybe it's to start a new business. Maybe you want to showcase your portfolio or your blog or show off photos of your cat. Well, when you're going to do that, you're going to need a domain name. And let me tell you from personal experience, a .com is the one you need to be considering because it's the original. It's the one that we all know. It's the best, you know? Uh, no matter what, it's going to lend credibility to your website. You know, I should have when I got hack5.org and gotten a .com. But anyway, that aside, a .com, they've got the highest aftermarket value. And Shannon and I love using domain.com to get our .com domain names because they are so easy to use, they're so affordable, they're so reliable, and they've got this great uh, presence on Twitter, at domain.com. 
So it makes it really fun to do business with them. They're, they've got great customer support. I love those guys over at Domain.com, and get this, they love you too. They're big fans of Hack5, and they want to hook us all up. So you can get 15% off their already affordable domain names, their hosting. Uh, all you have to do is use the coupon code HAK5 at checkout. It's that simple. So go over to Domain.com, use the coupon code HACK5, and there you go. When you think domain names, think Domain.com. Time once again for the Technolist Photo of the Week. This week's photo is from Fox Nakamori. He shares his hack top and his land tap with us. And those are pretty awesome, I gotta say. That's cool. I, I love seeing the land taps. I'm always like, yeah, woo, soldering skills, what? <laughs> or if you get the pro one, it's just like, yeah, professional, yeah. Jason's got a uh, soldering iron where he says that it's, uh, I gotta get him on here to, to show some cool stuff off. But basically, it's like it senses the density of the metal and based on that chooses the heat. What? And I'm like, cool, so if I put it on my skin, would it still burn me? And he's <gasps> like, uh, you wanna try it? And I'm like, well, you know, I am Darren. <laughs> you, yeah, it's true. You always break your pinky or something. All oh. right, well, if you guys have photos, you can always share them over at fo uh, feedback at hack5.org. Just put in the subject line, Technolest Photo. We should have like a, uh, what is it called? An Instagram hashtag or something. That's such a brilliant idea. <laughs> no, it isn't because Instagram is somebody else's network and then all the content is owned in the thing. And but I like email. the Instagram. Email though. I like it's the Open, <laughs> open, no terms of service on email. Okay, fine. Anyway, yes. <laughs> so, trivia. Trivia. Trivia time. Yes. So last week's trivia question was, can a Z68 motherboard run two GPUs in SLI mode, NVIDIA, or Crossfire X mode for AMD if two X16 physical slots are built onto the board? And the answer is yes, but, haha, trick question, but the two cards will run in dual 8X mode. So there you go. I wonder if anybody actually got that one right. Man, I feel so much <laughs> smarter now that I know that. I know, it's like, yay, math. Yay. <laughs> this week's question is, early CGA color graphics adapters displays gave the user what kind of two graphics <gasps> choices? Oh, I know this one. Yeah? I know this one. Well, I mean, I was so envious because I had a monochrome on my PC XT and my friend had a PC AT with a oh. CGA display. And then, and then things got really cool when EGA started going on with the 16 colors. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Very yeah. cool. You don't you really guys, need more than 16 colors. That's true. You guys can always answer the trivia over at hack5.org slash trivia for your chance to win some swag. And I recently sent out a whole bunch of swag. Yay. I take that back. 256 ought to be enough for everyone. <laughs> JK, LOL. Yes, of course. Oh, hey, we've got fun stuff going on with the hack shop. It's the season to get yes. your hack shop on. What do we have? Well, check it out. In addition to the uh, the ducky goodness, but we, we just put together this sweet little pack Ooh. of uh, Wi-Fi pineapple goodness. And oh nice. yeah, I love that. It makes me so oh, happy. Oh, it fits perfectly yeah, in there. I know, I know. It's the holiday pack. I'm super stoked I mean, about that. The antenna's kind of sticking out, but. Well, you could use hey, a, um, an extension. Hey, couldn't you use an extension and then just stick it in With there? With an SMA there extension, you, go, you could put SMA it on there. There you go, an SMA extender. And yeah, and perfect. then carabiner it it's to really your bag. It's really light. Yeah. I don't know why, but I was expecting it for it to be super heavy, but you could totally stick this like right on, on your belt. On your belt, belt buckle. Bam. <laughs> That'd be the most awesome belt buckle Just ever. Right there. Mm. Yeah, there you go. So cool. So you can get all the store stuff, store stuff over at uh, store stuff. Hack5 shop. It's a uh, shop at hack5.org. Yes, or just, yeah, that's the thing. If you're on YouTube, it's in the top right. If you're on Hack5, it's in the top right. Oh wait, I just gave you the email. It doesn't you matter, you'll the figure it out. Shop it Hack5, wait, what is our website? Don't worry about <laughs> it, she's not good with the websites. What we're gonna remind you to send your feedback to feedback at hack5.org with all that hack5.org slash follow to subscribe to all the Check things. Out tech Check feed. out Tech Feed. That's the channel on YouTube where you'll find ThreatWire. Hackshop.com. <laughs> <laughs> Threatwire is the show all about things that affect your personal security and privacy on the internet, as well as all of the things that threaten our internet. And I'm very passionate about yes. this show. We got Patrick Norton coming on uh, real soon, so uh, tune in for that, um, and you'll find the links over at hack5.org. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing that episode air. I love Patrick Norton; he's yeah. an awesome guy. So, with all that said, until next week, trust your technolist. Bye bye. I'm Morse. Bye. Remembers her name at least. <laughs> that one thing I do remember. All right. mm.